All right, my friends, welcome to a very cold and dark place. We have Scandinavia 1v1, uh, 733 ELO versus 734 ELO. So, could not be closer. I guess technically it could be very close if it's 733. But anyways, let's not nitpick on that. Um, in the blue, we've got Slack Breaker, who clearly has done their homework. Uh, Slack Breaker knows how much Hunt is available on this map. You've got three boars on Scandinavia, and you've got a big pack of deer. Uh, you do not have any berries, so if you had a berry civilization like the Franks, you might not want to play Scandinavia. So Slackbreaker goes for definitely one of the best civilizations here. And then Chad, 1001003, uh, Chad has gone for the Poles. And I could see the Poles having some uh, strengths here, because Poles are normally good if they wall up. And it is possible to wall Scandinavia with all the big wood lines here. I would say the issue, though, is because of those wood lines, sometimes you might not have the farm space that you want. So I'm going to just talk through what you should probably aim to do on this map. Uh, the, the main thing that you should probably try and do, I mean, obviously hunt and whatnot is strong, but you should aim to get some fishing ships out. You basically use the food that you bring in on land to send a lot of villagers to wood, and then you get a dock up on the shoreline, and then you fish. I don't expect that at this elo at all. And don't worry, people. I have been talking to the devs actually for three years about this, but they tweaked it on other maps, but not Scandinavia, uh, about the wolves on the shorelines. Um, now, maybe you guys out there are going to be like, well, it's very realistic. There's going to be wolves and bears when you run out into the wilderness. You know, maybe you guys really like that aspect. I do feel like it's a little unfair and a little silly, I guess, to have things essentially guarding the shoreline. <laughs> um... Because, you know, you could lose your villagers if you head out there to do exactly what I said. So, at least for the time being, maybe you want to be careful. Uh, taking my suggestion with the dock. But yeah, this elo, am I expecting players to dock? Nope! Because people don't really dock that much in general. I think it took like a year or two for people to catch on to even docking on a map for lakes. People were like, oh, this just has water on it, so it looks different. And they didn't really realize that fishing could be important. Um, so far, I am very impressed with uh, the build order from both players, particularly Blue. Blue has used all that food and has been producing villagers like a madman. I love it. 14 seconds of TC idle time. Of course, right after I complimented Chad, uh, the TC just stopped producing. Uh, maybe Chad was, ooh, no, Chad, 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 Chad. That's not the one you want. Chad, that's not the one you want. We've all been there learning hotkey schemes. That is a mining camp, not a lumber camp. Ooh. I mean, hey, fortunately, <laughs> I'm very curious if Chad deletes this or not. Because uh, I don't think Chad knows, based on the foundation, what that is yet. Now Chad's going to click the villagers to the trees and eventually realize that the villagers... Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so, so Chad's like, we'll save that for later. I've seen people delete that before, but oh, God, now Chad doesn't have a house. And now Chad's got to add the house. Everything's going wrong for Chad. But yeah, I've seen that before. This does set Chad back pretty far in the Dark Age. Plus, you're up against the Mongols with all that precious hunt. Like I said, so far, so good for Slack Break. I mean... Oh, wait a second. Oh, God. Okay, now Blue runs directly into the TC. Man, this is a very low ELO game. <laughs> like, and I'm not saying that they're they're like... I don't mean to imply that they're not doing a really solid job with execution in most cases. They're actually doing a very good job. But, you know, from the wrong building to the forgetting houses to the scout directly into the enemy TC. Yeah, this is this is a 700 ELO game for sure. But I'm loving the economy for Slack Break so far. We'll see if it gets to a point, though, where the Mongols may not have the eco lead anymore. Uh, actually, this is a this is a fun little problem that I run into sometimes with Mongols. I get my food so fast, and I'll get to 500 food and get all excited to click up to feudal age, but then I won't have the second building. So actually, Blue will have the food to go up to feudal age, but can't click up to feudal age until the mill is completed. So you could go like mining camp, mill, lumber camp, etc. Okay. Also, Urch, hello. I did no do zero notifications. Uh, thank you for reminding me about being live today. So remind me to do that after this, and everyone can stop by from the Discord. Um, I forgot. 
How's Chad doing? Oh, Chad's gonna wall. I got excited because I thought Chad was gonna dock. And Chad also forgot to make houses again. Chad, just go feudal age, my friend. Uh, uh, cancel these two villagers. Yeah, just go feudal. There you go. Good stuff. Okay, now Chad sees all this food. Exciting times. Uh, walling is good between the choke points, as we said, so that's good logic. Um, Chad is now going to place a mill. It's a full work for the poles. If you farm around this thing, you get little food boosts here or there, which is nice. But, uh, okay, Chad says death, death to all the deer. And it's actually a really smart strategy. You don't want the deer seeing their friends die and running away, right? Okay, actually, no, no, don't, don't, what? Chad, I thought you were going to eat each one, man. Okay, well, Chad doesn't know that there's slight decay on the deer. Okay, maybe Chad does know there's slight decay on the deer. All right, two here, two here. Taking your time. Taking your time. Lots of food. Now, this is a worrying sign. Slackbreaker has already had a much better start with the eco. And more food continues to fly in. And Slackbreaker has a barracks. Which means we could see a follow-up with a stable, and yep, this could be a scout rush. We will have just some walling here for Red so far, who has yet to leave his base and go to the enemy side. But in theory, right, once the poles start getting their economy rolling, it could make many arguments that the poles are the superior save economically. Now, will you have villagers? We'll see. Um... But yeah, it seems like Red knows the poles, because look where Red placed the houses. Normally, you'd be critical of the housing space, because it blocks the farm space. But with poles, you can do that, and then you can just farm around the full works. Wow, okay, so Red wants to stonewall that. That's interesting. And then Blue also is not making scouts. But wait a second, Blue's making a second stable, and hey, there are the scouts. Okay, so Blue wants to go for an ultra... Omega scout rush, but forgot to make houses and there's the there's the scrambled up house Um, I Mean listen, here's my suggestion if you're in reds position you want to be a little camper boy. That's that's actually fine I would say just maybe make spearmen, right? Now if someone has a well-executed scout rush or sorry archer rush then your spearman defense won't really work But at least then you even have a barracks and Then you can scramble up an archer range to make skirms Red has not moved this scout in quite a while. Um, is now going to make a blacksmith there, and now a market. So yeah, Red's thinking Castle Age. This is uh, this is risky. Let's look at the resources brought in. Oh, it's so painful. Blue's been so much better in every single category. It's, now we have the wood upgrade and the farm upgrade for Blue, as Blue's going to start to transition into farms. And here comes Blue with the scouts. Um, just one scout for now, obviously, but about to be four. The Red's now finished with the boar. Okay, important moment in this game. Will Red wall it up before Blue arrives? Red will win this fight, so there's a chance. And Blue is over here. Blue does not know about the walls, so Blue's like, hmm, I don't like that I'm losing this scout war. Does Blue know you can get a hill bonus? Doesn't look like it. I think Blue's just trying to loop that scalp around, maybe meet up with the friends. But unbeknownst to Blue, you cannot loop over there because there's a wall. Oh my god, Blue got in the hill. Wow, what a beast. All right, so now Red is <laughs> is trying to wall this up. And oh, please, this, this game will be so good if he can get the walls down because he's so distracted. We have wolves attacking the villager. Woo, 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 woo. Uh, villager goes down. Is there no loom? Oh, God, no loom. Oh, it could be multiple villagers. You are poles, though, so your villagers actually heal a little bit. And now blue is, is again, over here, and it's just going to attack the walls. Okay, so deep breaths. But this is now walled. Uh, red has a villager outside the, the walls, but... Okay, so does Red notice this? Obviously, if these scouts get in, this could be a disaster. Red's been very distracted. Red's still checking. Don't tell me Red's gonna... Is, is Red realize? It would be really funny to me if Red were to wall there. Okay, Red noticed! Red noticed! Let's go! Okay, so there's gonna be a house there. 
Now, what Red has not noticed is that all these villagers are gathering behind the Fulwark. That's the real downside of the polls. No one likes to talk about it, but it's such a bad bonus to have a bigger mill because then you can't see your stuff. Okay. These villagers are debating going ice skating for a bit. They're like, oh, that'd be really fun. And they're like, their boss is like, no, you got to get back to work. Okay, Red, are you going to notice this? Okay, okay, okay. Finally, Red starts to chop the trees here. Now, Red, you have 1,000 wood. That's a lot of wood. What are you going to do with that? Hopefully, the answer is farm. 10% of the farm's food goes directly into your bank after you build a farm around a full work. And this is not bad. And you even have enough to be able to go for more full works. Blue says, hey, you know what? That was a really good idea. I actually am scared in the long run that you're going to pressure me. So Blue is going to wall this. Meanwhile, this lady, I don't know exactly what job she's been given, but she is behind enemy lines. Well, no, no, she's not behind enemy lines, but she's the only person in her entire village to have left home base. Wow. And she wants back in. <laughs> She's experienced what the real world is like, and she does not like it out there. It's a very scary place. Come on, you can do it. All right, you can do it. Just because your parents' generation, and then your parents' parents' generation, and your parents' 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 generation stayed here, doesn't mean you can't leave this small town and go accomplish new things. Um. Okay, the mining camp, which was a problem earlier for Red. Red says, okay, I'll just, I'll just stick with that. That's fine. That's going to bring in some stone and some golden cum. Blue is, is spending stone on walls over here. Uh, we have a barracks from Red. I mean, Red's eco is looking much better now. Look how many villagers Red has in queue. So we, we talked about this before. The Mongols have all that potential to do damage. Hole's arguably stronger with the land economy. A bear has been killed over here. Um, and more villagers being brought over to Stonewall. And I mean, Red's economy w won't be too bad either if Red starts to add town centers. But you know, it, it is a very uh, choke pointy map through the middle. So it'll be interesting if players build up towards military later. More farms around Fullworks for Chad. So in like two minutes, I'm going to check the total resources collected. And I wouldn't surprise me if Red actually has had more. Red has forgotten this villager. She's actually looking for her friend who's trapped outside the wall. Hey, what happened? Wait, what happened to her? Oh my god! She came home to defend her family! Wait, hold on. I'm so sorry, but I need to go back. This is a very important moment in this game. Wait, did she... Wait, that might not have been the same one. Don't worry, I can jump to where we were. It was the same one. Oh my word. Okay. All right, so she she deleted the wall, came in. No one in this town could deal with it. They were all so distraught because that scout had killed their friend earlier. Oh, no, 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 no. This happens to me too. Don't, no, no, you got to build the full work first. Oh, sad times. Sad times, sad times, sad times. Okay. Um. Well... Blue is pretty heavy on stone now. The Mongols' best unit has got to be the Mangu Dai. Speaking of Dai, I think a villager died here. I don't know exactly where that villager went. The total KD is 2 to 2 right now. Red, of course, the, the difference here, um, I guess it's not technically 2 to 2, but the reason Red has one more death compared to Blue's kills is because of that wolf or bear or whatever it was. Could be wrong, but I believe there's actually a gap there. We'll see if that's important later on. Blue says, I want more villagers in my town. And Blue's now going to go here. And I promise you guys I would check the resources collected. I was wrong. I was very, 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 very wrong. Uh, Red is very far ahead in that regard. And the worker efficiency overall tells the story. Remember how long those villagers were just standing there for Red? Anyways, Red wants to take this late game. Red still hasn't clicked up to the castle. Oh, no, I lied. Never mind. Red does click up to the castle age here. Wow, and Red's going for house wall behind the building wall and house wall behind the wood line here. Red sees that as an area of weakness. All right. Also, Blue just deleted the barracks. Um, 
I, I imagine Blue wants to build something there, and it's going to be a gate. All right. Also, I don't know if Hardy's around by chance. He might, he may or may not be listening in. But if one of the mods are listening in, if they want to do a ping to the people on Discord to let everyone know I'm live today, that would be awesome. I can do it after this if no one gets to it. All right, so Red's a farmer, okay? Um, and that's cool and all. But Red, you really need to get more gold or more stone. And I understand you built this mining camp and it was a mistake originally and you kind of want to act like you tried it and you're just like, <laughs> you know, just like, this is fine. No one will notice a thing. We all know, Red, that wasn't intentional. Maybe just make another one. Just make another one. It will make life a whole lot easier for you. Promise. Um, we have cavalry armor now for blue. But it's only one upgrade. You know, some people will spam upgrades. So that tells me that blue's getting that intentionally for something. As for what, I'm not too sure. Ah, um, that upgrade will complete. I do remember a time where I felt like that upgrade would benefit anything on a horse. I don't know if anyone else out there can relate to that. But then I realized, I found out that getting archer armor affects cav archers. And it was a very confusing realization. I was like, well, that doesn't make a ton of sense. But then you just get used to it. Uh, we don't have any real craziness going on. I mean, it's very safe for red. Like, red is a big fan how compact this base is blue could drop a forward castle though and blue did make a gate and blue is no military to really protect it but blue's gonna drop a castle there <laughs> let's go now it does not affect all the horses only the ones that carry bows correct like archer archer armor sorry affects the ones that carry bows and then that armor that we just saw blue research affects the ones that do not carry bows. All right. So that's an interesting castle spot. And red can't actually see that. Red will obviously find out. You know what's going to be... Oh, no, never mind. Red did make a mining camp here. I was going to say it'd be funny if blue shot down this mining camp, forcing red to make a more efficient mining camp. And wow, red is fishing. Red says, I want some tuna in my diet. Good protein. All right, so you know me, always trying to spread tips to the nation, to the nation, to the world. Um, here's my tip. So if you are gonna go with a forward castle, there's a couple rules of thumb. Now you don't have to follow these, but I think it's good to follow. Forward castle should a immediately deny an important resource. B lead to an immediate attack, which you can do damage with. Or C, lead to a faster Imperial Age. So I say this because someone in Red's position, he sees this and he'll say, oh man, that's really scary. What should I do? And so he, he might not come to this conclusion, but oh, well, okay, I've got walls. Let's just drop a castle, go imp and trap that down. What would Blue do if that happens? Nothing. That's kind of funny. Blue's going to try and chop through here. And Red, oh, that's so epic. I don't even think Blue's trying to do it, actually, but there is one line of trees there that Blue will eventually chop. Yeah, so so my point is, um, you know, like, there is a world where this castle being here and not leading to any Mangadai production or not leading to instantly denying something or leading to imp, that could be a problem. But that's that all depends, right? Otherwise, you know, especially when you really want your castles with Mongols, I would suggest maybe, like, a or defensive castle but you got to think about what it does to your opponent too and like red seems to be a little afraid of what could come out of that castle and is currently making some knights um soren what's up i've been live for like 40 40 50 minutes um played a game on scandinavia actually and then have been casting since i'm beginning to like red's position more and more uh, red is two TCs producing vills virtually all the time. And Blue's done a good job with that as well. Uh, but the farming eco is really solid. Continues to add more farms. The resources are really solid, which is the case for both players. And you can tell Red right now is trying to click up. I think tried to click up to Imp and it didn't allow. 
him to do so, so he just got hand and a bunch more villagers. But now Blue's imping, and now Blue's making Mangadai. And this is what I talked about. Like, this can be really troublesome for the opponent. And wow, Red, there's a chance this castle actually gets shot down. <gasps> no, 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 finish it. Oh, my God, okay. Um, but yeah, Red's going to drop a castle here now. And that is obviously going to be an immediate target. And, you know, like I said before... Now that blue's going to be in faster, red's being so casual about this, this isn't going to be very good for red. T90, did you see my message on Discord? No worries if not. Um, honestly, it would you're going to have to be more specific there. Uh, it's possible. If it was feedback on TTL, we have a, a Discord for that that I'd suggest you use instead, or I ask that you use instead. I've been receiving a lot of PMs recently. And I'll read them, but it's really hard for me to get back to everyone. Whoa, red is making transports. Dang. And blue sees his opponent has knights and is going to add barracks to maybe go pikemen. Now, Mongols don't get pikemen. Uh, sorry, they don't get halberdier. And so that's not really the best unit line to commit to. And oh boy, oh boy, pain, pain, pain. Okay, blue realizes... Oh my god, though. Red transporting would be so sick. Blue's actually adding fire galleys and fishing ships over here, though. So they are thinking about the water a little bit. Um, And there is the slot shop privilege upgrade. Oh, I got you, Yip Yip. I, di I didn't get a chance to get back to you on that. But man, I mean, the imp, t the imp time is going to be insane here. Now, on the bright side, having that unique tech in means that your knights are really cheap, which can be really helpful. Also, I think blue sees that, guys. I believe that blue sees that. Let's see if blue goes over here. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Let's go! I don't know if one fire galley could take out two transports. Uh, but red is going to have to realize this and hop out of the transports. Red's like, uh, panic. Oh, split up, guys. Split up. Good move. Now, you have to click the, the garrison. You have to click a special button here. Red might be like, I don't know what to do. Meanwhile, that one's actually making it, which is hilarious. Red clearly has no clue what to do. So those five knights go down. Red's still here. And Red's getting trebbed. And Red's making knights. So Red's got to be super focused on that. And blue is adding pikemen. The big issue for blue has been houses, though. And now the knights are in. The knights are in. It's worth it. It's worth it. And I don't know if blue knows about this either. I think if I'm blue, I'm looking at the front. I've got a treb to protect. I've got pikemen to create. And man. And also in blue's eyes, blues will think that he dealt with the threat. Because he didn't see the transport. Now red clearly distracted. Okay. Okay. Let's see if red attacks underneath the TC. I feel like red will and should because blue hasn't shown any sign of reacting yet. Okay, and now blue reacts. Now what will happen is blue's going to kind of need to to run in like run back home to deal with this, which sucks. It's so annoying when you do that cuz you, you're focused on the front. Here come the pikes. More villagers are getting picked off and red is pulling ahead here, guys. Chad is pulling ahead big time. Also, Chad will probably lose his castle. He's trying to get uh, conscription out of the castle. And there could be a long-term issue for Chad if Chad doesn't know what unit to commit to. I think Cavalier's fine, but you definitely have to get the Cavalier upgrade. There's only three villagers inside that town center, and those pikemen have zero upgrades. And here comes Red! Let's go! The look of the pikemen running home, and Red says, Nobody... You're needed here, my fool. How dare you castle drop my perfectly built base. This is for the scout earlier on in the game. Now, okay, small thing, Red. Maybe take out the trebuchets. There you go. Yep, take out the trebuchets. But blue will have nothing. And red has more knights in queue. And I don't think murder holes is in. So the castle will actually go down to the knights here. Dang, what a sick game. And, and you know, I've been talking about it a lot. Like, I really think... This, this slotcha privilege upgrade is is busted. <laughs> the balls. 
I, I don't want a heavy nerf on it, but I, I think like 60% off on Knights is just a little too much combined with the Polish Eco. And Blue's just like, what do I do? So Blue's going to go Heavy Camel. Um, and that's not bad. A Heavy Camel's good against Knights. And already has tried Pikeman as well. But clearly just missing some upgrades at the moment. Uh, you can tell the pa the classic panic, let's click everything. Um, as this castle's going down. But, I mean, Red must be feeling like such a beast right now. And you could say that that transport ship really opened up the opportunity to snipe the trebuchets here because blue would have never had to run home blue would have been more focused maybe blue could have had more units and upgrades to defend the castle now red doesn't have siege at all uh so there's a chance it starts to become a little bit of a problem but still red has so many units blue is producing more pikemen though the castle still has 2000 hp Red continues to attack the castle with knights. Blue catching up with some upgrades. But I think the castle will go down. Murder Holes is in now. So these things are getting hit by the castle fire. Um, Blue is still producing pikes every so often. The cavalier will be in for red eventually. Would love to see red maybe, I don't know, like make some siege. That could be smart. But... Holes feel a little bit like goths, where you just spam knights and you don't ever transition, right? Like, that's that's how poles are. Goths are the same way with infantry. Hoardings! <laughs> Blue is researching hoardings to keep the castle up, and he might actually do it as well. The stubbornness from red well, might lead to this castle standing. We have more pikemen on the way. We've got no more camels on the way, sadly. And Red's like, nah, nah, nah. I'm just going to make 30 more Cavalier. Because that makes sense. And let's see if Red fights the army first or goes in after the castle. Okay, so Red's going to fight the army first. Now, because of the numbers and the blacksmith upgrades, Red's still winning these fights. So, uh, and Hoarding's added, like, I don't know, 200 more HP because there was so little HP remaining. Okay, maybe it looked like it was going to be possible for Blue to hold this for a bit, but I don't think so. And I think Blue just doesn't know what to do against this and is now going to add another tc so blue says all right we're going to give up that position we're going to add more economy i'm curious to see how assertive red is uh and how aggressive red is because i mean red has tons of unit spam but i wonder if red is going to be able to push to finish the game should be able to with you know what will soon be 30 cavalier but and that castle's still up yeah, the pikemen are going to buy blue some time. Oh, God. Don't tell me blue actually gets repairs in. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. You're kidding me. No way. I forgot those villagers were there. That's so... That's huge. Because if blue can add... I mean, blue's still struggling to focus on that. But if blue could start to mix in some more villagers at home... <laughs> like, red still doesn't have another castle... It'd be so easy for Red just to drop a castle and then make trebs. Dang. Okay. Well, Blue holds on. And also, Blue is making a lot of camels. Has full armor. Not, like, full for what the game allows, but for what Mongols allow. Wild lines, attack. Yeah, so the camels would be very strong now. Oh, man. All right. Well, this is where, like... Low Edel players are very stubborn. Sometimes they just click their units after a building and they just stare at it and they don't think about what the next step is. Until they're forced to think about the next step. And I think right now, Red is being forced to think about the next step. So what's the next step going to be here, Red? Now, here's the thing. Um, for anyone who is looking to make pikemen with a sieve that doesn't get halberdier. So, this is something I hope that helps people. So, counter units like pikes and skirmishers they have very low base attack okay so it's not like really their attack that's all that exciting it is more so the fact as we are going to see red drop red don't drop it there red don't drop it there red 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 you saw what happened last time don't drop your castle there red oh boy red's gonna drop it there all right take your time anyways so the big thing is bonus damage okay so halberdier 
Someone tell me the exact number. They, they give insane bonus damage against Cav. So what I'm getting at here is if you don't get Halb, usually, and there are a few exceptions, you, you kind of want to avoid making Pikemen. I, it's not saying it's a bad unit to mix in if you have the resources for it, but I'm glad that Blue is now relying on something else. And Blue's like, oh, wow, a castle. Well, I, it's a good thing I have this Treb. That's awesome. My phone is ringing. I don't know if you can hear that. But uh, I'll shut that off because my attention is only on this game right now. 22 camels. There's 29 cab. However, there's 40 more cab on the way for red. The red is now making trebuchets, but it's obviously created a lot of work for themselves here because of placing the castle in that position. But actually, this works out because all the camels can't engage. Again, like, poles have the ability to just spam into losing fights nonstop and still make it happen. They're insane. But it's not like blue doesn't have resources. Blue definitely has resources. Blue just forgetting to spend them here or there. Okay, now more camels are on the way. This is a better fight. Also making another trap. Red has one trap now. These villagers here are going to be really important, I feel. Look at this fight. Blue's dominating this fight. Chad, you're crazy, my friend. Chad Chad now queues up more trebs. So Chad's like, I need <laughs> to take out this castle. Okay, so Chad queues up more trebs. Now Chad is also repairing, which Blue is not. Um, and I guess Chad now canceled some trebs. And really wants the conscription upgrade here. Wow. Okay, Halbs get plus 9k attack for his cap. Okay, some of the stats that people gave were incorrect. And down goes the castle. So, Red, you're being too stubborn. I can see it now. People in the YouTube comments are like, Man, it just made me want to yell at how, how stubborn Red was. Why wouldn't he just do this? Why, why, why? And guess what, commenters? When you're in the game, you might have the same questions if you were to watch your own games. It's tough to play this thing, all right? This is Loey the Legends. Oh, God. Okay. So, Blue is repairing with one Vil there. Still, there's a chance that Red's Treb could do it. Oh! But wait, Red, go in! Go, 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 go! This is your moment! <laughs> this is your moment! He took the castle down to 70 HP before! I think Red will go for the Trebs first. There's still one villager behind the Treb repairing. Yeah, this is just like date. I'm having getting deja vu. Yeah, you attacked that lumber camp, Red. I have to imagine that was a misclick. That's sad. Well, he's raiding. He can't raid the opponent's economy, so the next best thing is to take out their lumber camps. All right, there you go. Took out that treb. Next trebuchet still standing. This is what's funny. I actually think that Blue does not want to treb this down. Blue, your best bet is just allow Red to just continue to feed units underneath your castle. I mean, I know the choke point might be nice for Blue, but I'm not so sure that Blue wants to give Red another way to run after that castle. I I actually think I'm incorrect, though, because Blue is queued up 42 pikemen now and can always queue up more camels. And Red well, has a lot of units in queue, but it's not in a lot of stables here. What's the resources collected look like? Dang, man. I told you poles really kick it up a notch later on in the game. Red also did have more villagers, so that that explains a lot of it as well. Um, something that would excite me from Red's position would be a castle in the back so you can move forward with Trebs. That's something that Red has failed to think about and I think is why Red is currently losing this game. Another thing that would excite me is another transport ship, but Red is very focused at the moment, so. Easy to understand why that might not happen, and okay, so th that's a good castle. I like it. That's a really good castle. This castle has 72 kills. Yes, 72 kills. Both players queuing up more villagers, more army, and are ready to go. 700 elo is a crazy place, man. Now, is Red going to attack the castle, or is Red going to go right to Blue's base? Because that's another strategy. 
He very much wants to take out that castle, but he doesn't see how much is there. Back away, back away, back away, back away, back away. Bail, 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 bail. <gasps> it's a massacre. It is an absolute massacre. My word. The Treb is even in on the attack. And Blue says, ha ha. My castle still stands. What are you going to do about it? Now, Red. I think, I'm beginning to think that Red just, like, hates castles. You know, like, Red, Red just so casual about this castle. Blue loves castles, right? I mean, Blue has prioritized that castle position so much more. This is where it gets exciting, though, because I feel like this dies to the Cavalier Red's making. And Red's castle is at least far enough back where Blue would have to advance past that gate with the trebuchet. Okay, let's see if Red attacks with everything. Red, very distracted, I'm sure. Okay, castle fire plus the cavalier. They'll deal with this. And now, blue is going to bring the treb forward, but red can still do this. And red, you can make trebuchets now, too. Like, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think blue... Oh, that's a smart wall. I don't think blue can do it. Now, blue is a god, and I believe that blue can be a god. This has been a really fun game. Both of these guys are amazing. Um, You could add a gate here. That would be so clutch. And you just quickly wall that up. Uh, maybe not the best spot to make houses red. But yeah, if you wall that up, then you could have trebuchets on the other side of the wall. The choke point is really bothering red. He doesn't really know what to do. And <gasps> it can range. Oh, disaster. Disaster. Oh, God. Red, Red's so unsure on how to handle this. Red is making trebs, though. And Red's now going to run this way. I mean, he seems very confused. <laughs> uh, he's now repairing, though. He's also making Trebs finally. So there's only one Treb from Blue right now. Okay. Also, important thing to mention, Red is now out of gold. There's no gold income. Blue is now looking to just repair the walls. One villager. What's stronger? 40 Cavalier or one Hammer Boy? Looks like it's going to be the Hammer Boy, but wait a second. Red is... Red is trebbing down the gate, and Red is going to try and make a run for this now. And it's, of course, desperation time, right? 39 Pikemen. Well, Red, uh, Red might break through this area first, actually. Okay. The Pikes are there to protect... The key right now, if you're red, like, after you get through, I actually don't mind him going for the gate. But I think the key has to be the castle, too. Hey, okay, red. Oh, 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 the pain. But, hey, he wants the trebs. He'll get the trebs. That will happen. I think the rest of the units are going to die. Thankfully, these things are cheap. Now the trebuchets from, from red are going against the castle. And remember when I talked about how... Pikemen are just not that exciting. The waves of Pikemen continue to die to Cavalier. This is still winnable for either player. What in the world? Blue has the lead for sure, though. Blue's making Pikes combined with the Camels. Blue also has a lot more gold banked up, including two Relics, which will give gold for the rest of the game. But what a crazy one here. And now we have Winged Hussars. Winged Hussars do not cost gold. And with the tech that Red did research... At least I think Red did. It was in Red's castle. You do get a little bit of uh, trample damage, they call it. Okay, so Red's like, I'm not at all ready for the next fight yet, so I'm just going to try and bake a house here. Okay, never mind. No, I'm not. It's not cool. Why are you attacking villagers? Red also might not know about relics. Hasn't gone for that relic yet. Goes for the Mangadai, though. Blue has 32 camels in queue. That's a problem. That's making me think Blue will eventually win this game, but Red's just going to drop a house there. Says so just passing. Now, if Red starts to make pikes, um, it's a little bit different. Love to see Blue also mix in some Mangadai. The Rangers are there too, so maybe we'll see something like Cav Archers. And Red, Red is just not prepared yet, so Red just plugging the gap with houses. Now, what would be amazing is if Red were to make Hussars and then just run right into Blue's economy. 
Like, Red has been very reactive. And as I preach all the time, one of the best ways to make sure that your opponent isn't hitting you is to hit them. Um, wow, what a game. This is so sick. This is such a great game. Uh, Juice says, thanks for Wonder Dropping Doubt yesterday. Honestly, well played, though. It was a very clean game. Hey, thank you. I felt good about the win. Mm. So, neither Civ gets held. Holes do get uh, the final armor upgrade for their pikemen. So, their pikemen are stronger. Also, pikemen are stronger against camels than pikemen are against cavalier. Blue now building up with lots more production buildings, which is awesome. And Red's doing the same. And Red just seems to realize, I'm not going to fight here until I'm at 200 population. And Blue's maybe building up towards the same. Blue needs to get more houses, though. But I guess the castle will give some pop space. Okay, more farms. Full work hasn't been built. So you're not getting the boost, which is kind of sad. But more and more farms from Red. Red is not finished. Red has 61 Hussar. All important moment here. Blue gets relic number three. Blue will also get this gold and eventually the stone possibly. Red is clearly a player who understands the polls, but other aspects of the game is, is a little iffy on, right? Um, some of these engagements haven't been that pretty. The lack, like not collecting any relics in late game is also not the best sign. Uh, don't you hate it when there's a traffic jam at like 5 o'clock when you're driving home from work. That's what we're seeing right here. A little loop around from the Cavalier and a couple pikes. But the castle for Blue is going to be there. That castle is going to get a lot of assists. And as we said, camels are so good against cavalry. The, the eco side of Red's play and the production buildings, that's great. Even like the upgrades for Red's pretty good. But like some other aspects like the castle, lack of relics. But man, Blue uh, is going to make Cav Archers. And you could make arguments that going for Heavy Cav Archer is better than going for Mangadite if you only have one castle, right? Now, he only has two Archer Ranges, but he still has an awesome Unit queue. Great, great stuff, man. This is an awesome game. But again, Red doesn't have gold. How can Red push back the Mongols without gold? Like, he, he needs to somehow kill this Death Ball. Only way he does that is with Pikes. And if Blue has Cavalry Archers, it's going to be more and more complicated for these Pikes to push forward. But 50 farms with the poles. Also, hello, Screeling. It's not too bad. I mean, we might have a game where Red runs out of wood here. Uh, Blue's just trying to loop around, I guess, thinking maybe the Red's expanded. Um, and Red is not expanded. That might actually get Red to expand, though. Red might say, hmm, maybe I should go out there. We have a 69 army death ball. And then we have... 50 army only for red, who is now behind in vills. And behind in the relics, behind in the resource collection. Let's look. Yep, look at that gold count. The food and the wood looking very good for Chad, though. Hmm. Yeah, I'm never sure what to call mid -Elo. People have said, like, mid -Elo mayhem. I like mid -Elo maniacs. Phew. Well, red's waiting until he can get more pikemen right now. Oh, hey, a monastery. Let's go. All right. So red might actually get that relic and then could maybe snag this relic. And then in doing so, could find the stone and could find the gold. All right. Blue is definitely going to go for the push. I think blue being a 200 population, probably pretty happy with things. When you're at around that population, you start to bank resources. You don't want your opponent to have time, so... Is the right play. Red has created a blockage here. Um, the winged hustlers are going to loop around. Again, these things feel free at this stage because they only cost food. Okay. The pikes are here. Not bad. Not the worst fight ever for Red. Red's also using the trebs against some buildings. Okay, using the trebs against the cav archers there too, I think. <laughs> that's that's how you counter cav archers right there. Uh, 
still love the composition from Blue. I feel like it took Blue time to realize that that full gold composition would be the way to go here. Also, it, more than anything, I think it took Blue some time to realize how good the range units might be. And Mongol Cav Archers do fire faster than other Cav Archers. I don't know, guys. The longer we watch this game, and it's been a doozy, the more... Oh, look at Blue protecting the stone. The more I just feel like Blue will always have a response for whatever Red throws this way. And Red will not be able to afford things in the long term. Even though the Cavalier are cheap, if you don't have any gold income, you'll have problems. There is a monk there for Red, so Red will probably want that relic. But, uh... Looking worse and worse for you, Red. What does Red do? Cues up another 80 or so units. Blue's KD just, just getting better and better and better. Now, Blue, wait for four traps. All right? Talk about this a lot. Go for four trebuchets when you go for the kill, not two. Blue's still waiting, though. Blue will use the camels now and go for the traps. Also, these camels will break in as well. Red's having some massive problems. It looked like this game was going to be eight minutes long. But Red was able to get the walls down and have a really strong castle age. And it's had a really good farming eco. A nice spam as well. Blue is loving life with the Cav Archers. This group of Cav Archers here has uh, 66 kills. And Blue just slowly grinding Red down. Camels are now in the farming eco. Red is to deal with that. Red did get one relic, so that's some gold income. Blue now is going to grab this relic, though. That'll be relic number four and is also taking the stone. Amazing play from Blue. T90, till when will you play FIFA? Oh, wait. Till when did I play FIFA? As in, like, when did I stop playing it? Um, I don't know. I actually played it, like, this year. But I, 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 it's, like, one of those games that, like, for some reason, I'll have an evening where I bait myself into getting it. And then I just hate it after, like, two hours. But I used to play it a lot up until, like, 2013, I'm going to say. I played it a lot from, like, 2008 to 2013. Those are, like, also, like, my gold... I don't want to say my golden years of gaming, because I think you could consider this to be my golden years in some ways for different reasons. But, you know, like, at that age, right? Like, that was, that was like, in high school and then early college. I have some fond memories of those days. Okay, I'm curious to see how this fight goes. Because there's a lot of wing Cussos in there, and they do... A little bit of trample damage, so they should be able to hit those Cav Archers more than normal Hussars would be able to. It's actually not a bad fight for Red, all things considered, right? Against double gold units, kind of like counter units if you think about it. Like the Camels obviously against the Cav, but then the Cav Archers against the Pikes. Blue will hold it in the end, but Red was able to get some decent damage in. Still though, you don't have the Relics, you don't have map control. And you had you lost 80 units for that. And guys, I love this. Red is uh <laughs> red is gonna make transport ships. Now I, I'm assuming red doesn't know that you can get upgrades to fit more things into each transport ship. But that's freaking awesome. He's gonna try and go in, he's gonna try and hop into Slackbreaker's Eco with a bit of a um raiding army. But I think this is now Blue's time to use the Trebs and just not allow Red any more time. Uh, why do so many people stockpile stone instead of dropping multiple castles? Even in higher elo, they'll be sitting on 1,200 stone. I, he I see that criticism of higher elo, but I don't think people understand. Like, I think it's a trap sometimes to just drop a castle when you have the stone. Because it might not be the, the position you want. There's no, like, relics don't give you stone long-term. There's no way to get stone once the stone is gone. So you just got to make sure your castles make sense. For blue here, I mean, it's, he only has one castle. So a castle here would be really good. Maybe a castle here, you know, just to protect from raids. But as red accidentally makes militia, I see a lot of low elo players just simply make a castle when they have the stone for it. And that can lead to them having... It's like four castles in the same spot, or after they win a fight in an important area of the map, they can't 
immediately castled and secure it. So if you see higher elo players doing it, like saving up stone, it's just because they're not, they haven't quite found that spot yet. In this case, you know, if you're making Mangadai, obviously you would have wanted more castles a long time ago. All right, well, we know this to be the case about mid to low elo players, especially after a long game. They don't want to call it quits. Um, Red has put up a real fight in this game. And I appreciate that about Red. Blue is now <laughs> making heavy scorpions. So Blue's having fun just experiencing the whole Mongol tech tree. Uh, maybe we'll see some step lancers next. Now this is Blue's point of view. Blue can see these transport chips, but can't see the other transport chips. <laughs> and Red is desperate. <laughs> oh my god. You know what would make this so amazing is if these Hussars clear out all of Blue's economy before Blue realizes. Oh, that would be awesome. Obviously, Blue's army can deal with this. Now, that's a lot of work. Like, five units in each transport ship. I guess it's not perfect. But let's go, baby. <laughs> let's go. The great Polish transports. Yes. Okay. Oh, Slackbreakers in chat. Hey, no spoilers, no spoilers. Okay, Mr. Slackbreaker, welcome, but please don't spoil what we're about to see if I'm not exactly at live time. Okay, the Hussars are in, so let's let's see. Um, now, this is still something that Blue can push with. It's not like that's going to be an issue. And okay, so now Blue reacts. So now Slackbreaker is going to have to send Army home, and you can see the panic. This is why I say raiding is so strong. Because now Blue's going to go react. What a great play from Red. Red is the population lead, guys. What is this? And see, now the next army from Red will have an easier time trying to combat. This still doesn't have enough. But dang. Okay. And he also split up the Hussars, too. Like, uh, Hussars here, Hussars here, and also Hussars back here. And Slackbreaker has just dropped down to 120 pop. No way. Okay, <laughs> Slackbreaker's going to try and drop a sneaky castle in the back now. Red may or may not notice that, but Red could clear this with just Hussars now, I think. Blue obviously cannot build it over top of the farm. Um, Blue will maybe reposition it now right next to the farms and hope it just completes. The Hussar raids have destroyed Blue. No way. 58 eco. And the winged hussar sniped the treb. But will Red notice this? <laughs> Let's go, Blue! Let's go! You build that castle. Yeah, wow. How many villagers are here? This is half of Blue's economy building this. And okay, Red now notices. But the castle will complete. And that's going to be a real pain to take out. Because all those HP upgrades came in earlier. Oh, what a great castle. So I think this gives Blue time to come back into it. But still, I mean, there's Hussars there. Most of Blue's economy isn't working. The resources are there. <laughs> oh, a sneaky stable now from Slack. And Red, I think, is trying to find safe woodlines at the moment. This is an amazing game. This is one of the best Lel games we've seen in a very long time. The blue should deal with this and add more villagers, certainly, but obviously he's very distracted. This is a smart play, though. Make the stables back here. Red is probably just going to continue to make Hussars and try and take out the castle, but that you need, like, 100 Hussars for that. You can't do that. And Blue is starting to add more villagers again. Uh, which is going to be annoying, but it is something you have to do. And this allows Blue to focus on going for the kill in the middle. Also, the eight transport ships have come home. <laughs> but there's now nothing to raid. He's like, okay, we are going to raid the enemy village again. But sire, we killed everything. <laughs> there's no one there. <laughs> um... I mean, I feel like Rams would have been a really smart choice for Chad. Chad seemed to have issues with Siege in general in this game. Love this from Blue as well. Finding what's left of the gold. I mean, how how often do you see 
a game goal on this song. Also, lovely castle from blue. This is precisely what I talked about earlier, right? Castle in this area in case there's a raid. I think Slackbreaker is going to make this happen still. But I love red because red fights. In a land in Loilo where a lot of players resign when they lose a villager to a boar or there's a sign of the first attack, not trying to call anyone out. The fact that red has continued to fight and it's actually almost brought this game back uh, against all odds is impressive to me. Okay, red needs to take care of this castle. Now, blue has made stables and is going to make some units out of them, but hasn't done so yet. And now is starting to lose all these villagers. And before, there were villagers inside the castle, so the castle was firing a lot of arrows. But now that's not firing a lot of arrows because the villagers are over here. And I think blue just kind of had like an oh crap moment and now starts to produce out of these stables. The castle's at 3,000 HP. I can tell you that if hoardings and all those technologies to give the castles more HP wouldn't have been researched out of that original castle, Blue would lose this castle. But now Blue is making camels and light cav. And if we could eventually see the Hussar upgrade come in as well, that would be awesome. And the castle will still stand. And Blue is now pushing the main area of Red's economy. And will start to treb down the TC. And the town bell has been rung, which is perhaps a sign of defeat. Ring a ling ding ding ding. Of course, the villagers are so far away from the TC, villagers aren't actually gonna hop in there. And look at Red. Red's gonna try again with the transports. Dang, what a game. What a game. If Blue could just get raids in with these this army though into the back of Red's eco, I think at that point the game ends. Blue has a lot of resources banked, has a nice little choke point to work with with the Megadai and Cav Archers and the Scorpions. Like red kind of holds, but it's still so exposed and just can be picked off anywhere blue wants. Red's probably going to try to raid again because Chad is just that much of a fighter. Seriously, Chad's one of my favorite players I've ever seen lose in low elo. Just such a stubborn player for all the right and wrong reasons. And okay, so now it must be feeling the heat and says, all right, transport time. Blue continues to push in. Blue has 80 army, though. It is not going to stop there. Blue has even more army in queue. And if this ends up into the back, that would be it for Red. Red's got one town center, one relic, one dream, and eight transport ships. So here we go. Eight transport ships are back at it. <laughs> Red will look at this, though, and realize this isn't really a good situation to have. But who cares? <laughs> Let's go with the transport ships. Now, again, this castle's clutch because it slows down those raids. Meanwhile, this army, great job. Finally loops back into this area. The TC will be taken out. The winged hussars, Red's distracted. And they will simply fall right into that castle fire. And the game ends. What an awesome game. 424 hussars are made by Chad. 277 pikemen were made by Slackbreaker. Who eventually realized, I don't need no stinking pikemen. I'm going to make camels. I'm going to make cab archers. That was the key. Um, Slackbreaker knew how to play this map in the early game, right? Um, I thought this game, because we see this at low to mid elo. I really thought it was over at like eight minutes because Slackbreaker had such a better economy. And Slackbreaker had the Mongols, but uh, Slackbreaker wasn't able to get through the walls, and Red did such a good job farming this game and spamming units. Red had 75,000 food collected at 700 ELO. That is, that is ridiculous. Uh, but in the end, just wasn't able to deal with the castles. Honestly, guys, how, I don't know what time of the game it was. Let me look back. Hey, this castle at one point went down to like 60 HP. Here, this was the moment. 89 HP. I honestly feel if this castle would have been taken out, that red wins this game. Because blue wouldn't have had the buildings here. Blue likely would have lost hope. That was that one castle going down to 89 HP and eventually still standing later on made the difference. Like there were the clutch repairs and everything, man. Yeah, so I think lessons were learned there from Red as well. You know, maybe not leaving your own castles exposed, but 
1,000 kills there for Slackbreaker. Uh, it was 629 there for Chad. And what more do I say? I mean, even the techno amount of technologies research was fairly high for both players. We had water control. We had transports. We had so many different things involved. And I feel like I should have more motivating things, more exciting things to say at the end of this one because it's so good. But I hope that people who watch it later on YouTube enjoyed it as much as the people did here on the stream. I hope that you're having a nice day. I hope that if you're using me for a nap that you're already dozing off. Just relax. <laughs> I was going to go. No, I just made it weird. Okay, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. I made it really weird. Uh, that's my other YouTube channel. 